In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Samsung QN90C Mini LED QLED. This is not their highest flagship model for 4K anymore. It is now the QN95C, which is not out yet, but this is one step down from the flagship. Now, I'm going to start by reviewing this panel pretty quickly as it is, and then I also have last year's QN90B, the TV that this replaces. So I will be comparing them. So this video is a little bit over 14 minutes long. However, there is a lot to cover and having that direct comparison with last year, we can see what kind of improvements Samsung has brought with the 90 series. So stick around through the whole video. Let me know below in the comments if you did and what you think of the QN90C. So starting out with a little bit of HDR10+, plus. if you pull up the menu, you'll see the plus icon as long as it's not in the Filmmaker. It is still HDR10+, plus when it's in Filmmaker, it just won't show it. So I have four lamps on in the room, the two that you see on the sides as well as the two that you can see in the reflections. And this scene will show how a dark shadowy type scene will do with reflections. Briefly, we're going to go through gaming pretty quickly because again a lot of this is going to focus on the comparison with the QN90B from last year. This TV does have four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 48 gigabit per second ports and in gaming there's really not too much to worry or complain about. The accuracy in gaming if you worry about that at all has definitely much improved over past years from Samsung. The backlighting has improved a lot in game mode so there's very little issues with highlights or blooming and we can see if you look at that tree that I'm focused on as I move around back left and right there's a minor minor amount of inverse ghosting but very very little and very hard to see unless you're specifically looking for it. Now here in this dark cave as I look at those white name tags you see what happens is there's no actual blooming around them it's just actually kind of turning them down as I'm moving around so that it doesn't bloom in very dark areas like this. So in past year models for the LCDs from Samsung, they would really have to reduce the local dimming performance when in game mode, and you could really see it. Uh, now they're doing a much better job with it. And one of the main areas that I was really happy to see is if you look up in areas that typically would show posterization or color banding in bright skies and whatnot, definitely much improved. Now let's listen to the speakers that are built into the TV. me in Sintra, and he said less than perfect means death. Your stomach's growling loud enough to wake the dead, if that counts. Hunger makes for good sauce. Also makes for shitty lunches. <laughs> Siri. You are safe here. Overall, I think the built-in speakers are good enough where you wouldn't want to spend money on an entry soundbar, but maybe if you were going with something more expensive. Now, looking at the QN90B on the left and the 90C on the right, you can see how the previous model would smear the reflections and cause rainbow type artifacts across the screen with reflections and that is gone with the 90C. Those rainbows and smearing was caused by the wide angle filter that was applied to the previous model. Now we have a different panel type that does not require that. So while the B had a VA panel requiring the filter for wide angle viewing, the C has an ADS panel that does not. So you get better off angle viewing natively as well as better reflection handling. And this image also kind of shows what we'll see soon, where there's much better blooming control on the QN90C. Now if we move on to some measurements, you can see again keeping the 90C, the new one on the right, how the luminance is much more stable and higher 
both in average APL or average picture level and this very high APL or average picture level brightness scenes. And then using typical window measurements, we can see a little bit higher on the larger patterns or in the very, very smallest of them. Now, as far as accuracy and HDR, with the filmmaker mode, you could only get so much accuracy out of the 90B, which was much improved with the C. Then in HDR gaming, we can get a much, much more accurate result out of the 90C than we could with the 90B. SDR also saw big improvements in accuracy, especially with gamma. Now we're going to move on to processing, where we can see the QN90C is handling low bitrate content much better than the 90B. It's much more obvious in person than it is through the camera as well. And then when it comes to noise reduction, we also get a big improvement. As you can see the wall behind her face, and then also looking at her face and hairline, you can see more detail, especially in each individual hair, where it's not removing some of the hair to try and clean up the noise behind it. So this is one of the issues that I had with Samsung previous models, where it would remove very fine details in order to try and clean up noise, and it ended up removing the details, not really cleaning up the noise, and wasn't that great. This year, there's big improvements in both areas. Now, both of these are LCD panels with a quantum dot layer, so you do get about 75% of BT2020 coverage, and that remains to be unchanged. Now, going into gaming between the two, again, as I said earlier, there's improvements in the way the local dimming is working while in game mode, so that's going to be a pretty big and noticeable difference if you were to have the two together. Separately, though, you would still be plenty happy with a QN90B if you have one. It's not enough of an upgrade to say that you should you know, get rid of the 90B or move it or whatever and upgrade to the C. But if you were trying to decide which one to buy, it's also going to depend on cost. So right now the 90B is being cleared out and the 90C is new and it's not on sale yet. So there is a drastic cost difference. However, if you wait a few months, the 90C will drop. And if you wait you know, six or more months, it'll be about the same price as what the B is. So then you have to decide, do you want to wait and get the C for about the same price, or do you want to pay more now and get it? Well, why would you do that? Pretty much the C is a more accurate and more flexible version of the B. Now, you just saw I switched it over to active tone mapping, and that makes it look much more in line with how the B was. However, if it's in the static tone mapping, you do get much more accuracy out of it. So like if you look up at the sun here, you see how it's blown out on the B and it's more defined on the C. So this is because on the B I showed the chart earlier where it's over tracking the EOTF, making everything brighter than it's supposed to be. Like look at Geralt's face and hair. And then when I switch the C over to active, you see it now matches where you lose a lot of the detail, eclipse a lot of the information, and it's just a little bit more washed out. Now for what a lot of you are interested in, and that's the blooming. So now if I put both of these in their most accurate way of viewing, you can see the blooming is much better controlled on the QN90C, and the midtones are still too bright and not accurate on the 90B. As we look at more scenes from John Wick 2, it really is no contest. The blooming control is much, much better on the QN90C, where the B being a CSOT VA panel, adds a blue glow to its blooming. You can also see on the left wall where we're getting more shadow detail with the QN90C, and then on the B, again, because it is overlifting the EOTF, some of the mid-ranges and whatnot will be too bright, which does not do it any favors when trying to control the blooming. You can see where I change the exposure on the camera to over-exaggerate the blooming even more, and even then you see very little on the QN90C compared to what you see on the B. And as we move around in motion, we can see how that affects from zone to zone transitions. And again, the QN90C is better being able to transition the zones much more quickly than the QN90B. And if you really look closely at the candles or any of the bright spots, you can see where the B is clipping and kind of blowing out the highlights a bit too much, whereas the C, you can get more detail out of them. Especially when we move into some brighter scenes with this bright light here, and when I pause it on the light, you can see where you get more defined detail out of the lights on the QN90C compared to the B. And again, this is with both of them as accurate as you can make them. Another area that LCDs really struggle is star fields. So if we look at that, 
we can see again where the bee is going to have that blue glow to the blooming around the stars, whereas the C doesn't. Uh, now the stars appear not quite as bright on the C here, but they are very similar. The B is over brightening things and you have much better control of the dark areas. Again, with more fires and candles, especially those kind of areas are gonna be much better on the QN90C. Here, if we look at the top black bar on the QN90B, whenever you get these smaller black bars, the B really struggles trying to keep the blooming out of those bars. It does pretty well as long as it's a typical like 2.4 to 1 type of thicker black bar, but these smaller ones, the B does not do so well. And at the bottom right, especially too. Looking at the Spears and Munzel demo, we can see especially around windows in the bottom right of this scene, and the windows at the bottom left near the Ferris wheel, and then the top of the Ferris wheel. Again, it's all less detail and more blooming on the QN90B. If we look at uniformity in bright white window, there's pretty good DSC on both, although the C does look a little bit cleaner. And then if we move into motion, you really see the artifacts more on the B using these motion tests. You see the spinning effect there. Uh, that's the artifact being caused by the QN90B, and this is even with the clarity menu disabled. Now looking at real content here for panning motion, again, I think the QN90C is just a tiny bit smoother. And then if we look at upscaling and sharpness detail, you can see more color in the crossbars on the B, which shouldn't be there. And if we look at posterization, again, there's a huge difference here, both in the 8-bit and 10-bit. This was especially more noticeable in gaming content for sure. Then looking at how the brightness changes with the expanding window here, we can see as the measurements showed earlier, as the pattern is gonna get bigger and bigger, it's gonna stay brighter on the Q190C than it is on the 90B. That's because there's more relaxed ABL on the QN90C than there is the B. Now, the ADS type panel does seem to have a bad reputation because the native contrast ratio measurements are lower. However, in real content, because of the way the local dimming is so much better, you can see in real content there is no visible change in contrast whatsoever. The native contrast measurement really doesn't mean or correlate to anything in real content anymore. The only way to even do that is to go into the service menu and to disable the local dimming, which you would never do. Now if we look at some really high knit content with tone mapping, again we can really see clipping on the QN90B, especially in the white of his shirt here. You definitely see less line and detail with the B than you do on the C. And I forgot to mention this earlier, both of these are calibrated to D65 and there is some metameric difference between them because of the differences in the panels and the SPD. So the whites do have a little bit of a difference from each other, even though they're at the same D65 white point. So as we start to wrap up the review, I'm gonna start playing a few of the demos from Spears and Munzel using HDR10+, which means it's in 10,000 nits with dynamic metadata. And this has to be one of the brightest ways that I have seen this demo. Now, especially on the QN90C, it does get a bit brighter than the B. Uh, really noticeable here with the horses scene. And if you look into the back of the scene, you really see more detail on the C as well. It's actually very impressive that there's this much of a change just year over year. Now, some of these more mid-range areas you can see are brighter on the B. Again, that's from the pumped up EOTF. You can really see where it blows out highlights there. And this is definitely getting blown out. So it really is pretty consistent scene to scene where the C is just an improvement all around. There's not really any area specifically where the B does anything better. Now, is there a major change? Not exactly, but everything added together adds up for a big jump in my opinion. Now, I don't think it's enough of a change, like I said earlier, to justify the cost difference at this current time period. However, again, if you can wait a few months, you'll get a much better TV with the QN90C. It's basically the same or better performance of the B, but more flexible in that you can make it more accurate or you can pump up the brightness how the B is if you prefer that. The QN95C, the one step up, will be out soon, so I will try to review that as soon as I can and see how that compares, but the 90C will remain cheaper than the 95. So that pretty much covers it all. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helps you out. If you can let me know in the comments below. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks.